right, hi everyone. Uh, Tenille Flowers back from vacation. Uh, I'm not sure if this or my podcast is coming out first, probably this. So be forewarned, there is a little podcast coming out in the future with my husband and I talking about our vacation. But anyway, uh, I'm here because Butterfly Identity tagged me in her 20 warriors questions. So I'm going to honor the tag and do the 20 questions. So here we go. First off, uh, question number one, how did you get into Warriors? Oh man, it seems so long ago now, but uh, I got into Warriors and I talked a little bit about this on my Q&A. Um, I got into Warriors a little later than most kids probably did. I think I was in about junior high um, and I saw the books, they had cool cats on them and... I picked up the books and the rest is history. I actually picked them up at a book fair and I picked up Midnight first, uh, which is the first book of the second arc. And I was so confused because, <laughs> because it's like, there's all this stuff going on that they're talking about that happened in the first arc. And I was just like, what? But it, it also like really intrigued me to know what all had happened. Um, and so I figured out that it was the first book of the second arc. And so I immediately went to go find the first book of the first arc into the wild. And then the rest is history. So yeah. Favorite arc. Ooh, this one's tough. Um, because you know, like the original arc, the prophecies begin certainly has like it's it's really well written and it's really like everything in that arc happens for a reason whereas some of the other arcs there definitely feels like there's some fluff added here or there or plot threads that don't necessarily feel like they get a satisfying satisfying conclusion or something like that um so, like, technically-wise, I feel like the prophecies begin, but, you know, almost all the characters from all the other arcs, I like just as much, if not more, than the original series. Like, I, I really like a lot of the characters in the new prophecy. I really like a lot of the new characters in Power of Three. Um, and I really, really liking the new series, Vision of Shadows, and Dawn of the Clans, which I'm finally reading. I just finished Sun Trail like a week or two ago, um, and that book was great. So uh, as long as Dawn of the Clans is as good as that first book and just keeps getting better, and Vision of Shadows just continues to be amazing, uh, I could see either one of those becoming my favorite of the arcs, but we'll just have to wait and see. Favorite book, excluding mangas, super editions, and novellas. Well, crap. Uh, this means I actually have to pick a book from one of the arcs. Oh, man. Oh. Oh. Uh, I'm looking over at my books right now. Picking a favorite book from the arcs is a lot harder than picking a favorite super edition or any of the other books. Because <sighs> there's definitely good things and bad things about each of the individual books in an arc. I'm going to be a cop out though and I'm going to go for the newest book, Thunder and Shadow. Because Thunder and Shadow was awesome to read, beginning to end, uh, and it just makes me really excited to see where this arc is going. So... Um, maybe I'm talking with, you know, like, rose-tinted glasses for what this arc might be, but right now, I'm, I'm gonna say Thunder and Shadow. It's like, you had the awesome, you know, new stuff that we haven't seen in the clans before with Rowan Star and how he's dealing with Shadow Clan, and, you know, these two sister kits that have been taken away from each other and forced to live in separate clans, uh, and I really love Alder Hart's character, and Needletail is a pain in the ass, and 
oh, it's so good. Uh, I'll, I'll go with Thunder and Shadow. Favorite super edition, novella or manga? Uh, <laughs> I think I should obviously pick Tall Star's Revenge here. Uh, I've blethered enough about Tall Star's Revenge, but out of all the warrior books, I love so much that there is not a, like, big plot or any, like, really sinister thing going on. Like, um, Blue Star's Prophecy, while being a very good super edition, it's a very good book, I feel like the conflict is really forced in that book. Um... And in Tallstar's Revenge, like, it's all about Tallstar's character arc, and it feels really natural. And yes, even though he goes to extremes that most people wouldn't really relate to, I find his story very relatable. Um, Crooked Star's Promise is also really, really good, but... Spoilers, I love Wind Clan and River Clan just isn't automatically as interesting to me. So <laughs> So uh Tall Star's Revenge gets put a little higher on that peg there. <laughs> and that leads straight into question number five, which is favorite clan. And I've already told you guys it's Wind Clan. Um mostly because I have written in uh in an RP for a really long time, and I've always written from the perspective of Wind Clan, so Wind Clan feels like my baby. Um, when I first started reading the books, I didn't have a preference really to any of the clans. And then I think I took a quiz uh, one time on one of the warrior sites, and it put me in Wind Clan, and so when it was time that I joined my RP group, I just joined Wind Clan because of that result. And of course, after years and years and years of writing characters in Wind Clan, it's just automatically become my favorite. Favorite character. I hate getting asked this question because there's, I don't have a, like, honest answer here. I don't have a favorite character. There is not one single character in Warriors that I'm like always on board with or when it's time for them I'm like yay they're my favorite um I really like Yellowfang I really like Cinderpelt I really like Jayfeather I really like Crowfeather uh Squirrelflight has grown on me Squirrelflight and Sandstorm have grown on me a lot um, now that I'm older, whereas before I didn't dislike them, but I just kind of felt wet about them, but I've, I've really grown to like both of them and Brambleclaw too, um, as the years have come on, uh, really like the new characters in, uh, Vision of Shadows, Alderheart, Twigpaw, uh, Violetpaw is annoying, but I still like her. Um, yeah, so I like a lot of characters. So this next question is least favorite character. Uh, similar to the favorite character question, I kind of don't have an answer for this. I don't really have least favorite characters. Uh, I find most of them pretty good or pretty interesting. Even characters that, like, when it comes to the, to be their POV, when I'm reading a chapter and I'm like, oh man gotta get through this character. That would definitely be the Lion Blazes, the Leaf Pools. Leaf Pool is one of those characters I don't mind as a character. And same thing with Lion Blaze. I don't mind him as a character, but Leaf Pool especially. Oh, I hate her chapters. They're just exposition dumps. And it's like, she doesn't seem to add anything to the story herself until uh, we get to Twilight and she has that whole fling with Crowfeather. Duh, I could go on and on about it, but Leafpool's point of view chapters are probably one of my least favorite things in Warriors altogether, and that includes Sky Clan books. Like they're they're very 
hard to get through for me, which is making my rereading of New Prophecy go really slow. They're just, ugh. Anyway. All right, so number eight. Most aesthetically pleasing cat. Uh, while this isn't necessarily, like, aesthetically pleasing, I'm just going to kind of make a little side note here that I always love seeing designs for cats that have uh, physical abnormalities, like uh, Crooked Star, Jay Feather, um, Cinderpelt, uh, characters that you kind of have to do a little bit of of research to, like, figure out what's going on, especially Crooked Star is really uh, difficult to draw with his broken jaw and everything like that. Um, So maybe while not aesthetically pleasing, although some of them are, some of them are quite beautiful, uh, they, they're, they're interesting character designs that I always look forward to seeing people draw. Um, Other than that, you've got like, your usuals, the calicos are always so pretty, and I love calicos. I really like the idea of red tail, of um, sorrel tail is like my bae. I love her. Uh, uh, tawny pelt. Uh, if anyone's seen my own tawny pelt design, uh, I really like it. Uh, I really like calicos. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, I guess, a little uh, mini rant. Like, Hawk Frost is always drawn as, like, this really hot boy band kind of character. So I guess, like, from a technical level, Hawk Frost is probably one of the most continuously uh, aesthetically pleasing looking cat designs out there. I know that's kind of weird, but... I mean, it's true. Look at any Hawk Frost design, and he, like he's always this hot kitty bad boy. Um, Maple Shade also always gets really interesting character designs as well. So I think she gets a lot of love and attention uh, put into her designs whenever I see them as well. Number nine, favorite leader. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go with Tall Star on this. Uh, he's, like, in the original series, he's strong, he's looking out for the well-being of his clan. Um, when you read his super edition, you get a lot of his backstory, and, like, he just seems like such a reasonable and noble leader who, even though he comes from a background of like, of the clans being very diverse, that after the events of The Darkest Hour, Tallstar is, like, willing to make the more cultural change the clans start to make into being a more, like, unified for clans. Uh, And even tries to promote the continuation of that idea when he dies by making One Whisker his successor. Which, you know wasn't necessarily a great decision on his part, but I like seeing how such a stubborn cat like Tallstar and such a fighter can also be such a peacemaker. That's really inspiring for a good leader. Number 10, favorite villain. (sighs) These favorites are hard because... I always like villains that uh, you can see the the good side of them. You can see where they're coming from. And unfortunately, a lot of Warriors villains aren't like that. Like, your big, your big villains like Broken Star and uh, Tiger Star... Like, their motives are pretty Saturday morning cartoon evil. Um, Who I do find more interesting is someone like Blackstar. And, you know, he's definitely a villain. I mean, he killed Stonefur. Um, He was definitely a villain in the first arc. And then he becomes leader of ShadowClan and kind of a good guy. And some could call this 
bad writing on the Aaron's part. And I mean, who knows? It's quite possible. But because of that, he has become one of the most interesting villains, in my opinion, because he's not a villain. He's just a guy following orders. Number 11, favorite medicine cat, Cinderpelt. No questions asked, Cinderpelt. Uh, Yellow Fang, Jay Feather, Elder Heart, uh, Mothwing. They're all pretty high. Barkface, they're all pretty high on that list. Even Hawkheart. Hawkheart's a really interesting guy. Hawkheart needs more love. But Cinderpelt is my favorite, no questions asked. She, she has such a relatable story, so sad. You just want to see her come through it and be the best she can be. And she does, and she doesn't complain about her circumstance. She gets back up on her, on her three remaining legs and just kicks ass. She's awesome. Twelve. Overrated character. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> uh... Number one, I think one of the most overrated characters is Scourge. And, I mean, he is extremely overrated. And people are so overprotective of protecting poor little baby Scourge, who is, guys, he's a monster. He did horrible things. Uh, Another overrated character is... Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have to say it. <sighs> Hawk Frost. <laughs> I, I know I talked about him being aesthetically pleasing, but that seems to be half the reason why people really seem to like him. Like, his whole plot in New Prophecy, like, ends before it really goes anywhere. And then he's like a really big deal in the dark forest for some reason. And I I don't know. It's like, I understand why people really like him. He is aesthetically pleasing to look at. He is, uh, he's got an interesting backstory. He's done interesting things, but it's just not enough. It's not enough for how much love and hype he gets. Uh, I would have liked to see him do more when I got to the end of New Prophecy and, you know, he was killed. It was really like a disappointment because it felt like Hawk Frost was just on the cusp of actually doing something that's worth being evil for. I don't think starting the war in Wind Clan, which was probably going to happen anyway, is really bad enough. Neither is tricking River Clan to get an awesome medicine cat in Mothwing. That's not evil. It's just kind of sucks that it ended up ruining Mothwing's relationship with Star Clan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mm, I want Hawk Frost to be not overrated, but he kind of is. Underrated character. Let's give it up for my boy Brackenfur. I don't even know if he's underrated at this point, just because of how much the community has latched on to their love of Brackenfur, which I'm so happy for, Uh, but he is, he is always a character that whenever he comes back and he's back in the books, I'm like, yes, there he is, keep doing you, man. Um, I guess as far as more popular characters that are underrated. Um, I, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I'm going to say crow feather. Now wait, 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 <laughs> before y'all write comments. I'm talking about crow feather at the beginning of new prophecy because at the beginning of New Prophecy, Crowfeather or Crowpaw uh, is really interesting. He's got 
a lot going on for him. There's like all these hints that he's leadership material. Um, he's relatable in the sense that, you know, he was about to become a warrior before he left. And now suddenly he's forced to go with these other cats. And even though he's always portrayed as the grumpy asshole, he's more than that because he's oftentimes a voice of reason or even just like someone who is actually willing to say no to Brackenclaw. Uh, or sorry, I said Brackenclaw, Brambleclaw. Um, and then, yeah, he, his character kind of totally goes off the rails once they get back, which is understandable because of the death of Feathertail and all that stuff. But I really would have liked to see where that crow feather was going to go. The, the midnight and moonrise crow feather was going to grow and become and do cool things and be the voice of the other side and stuff like that. Whereas now he's... He's like a plot device to cause drama. And I I still like him. But that part of him is really overrated. And the part that was interesting and not about love triangles and more so about him as an individual rather than the pain he causes female cats <laughs> is really underrated. So yeah, long rant, sorry. Oh, favorite minor character. Okay, so I know I already talked about Brackenfur. Um, I guess technically he would be my favorite. Uh, but as far as other another minor character goes, um, I'd have to say Oakheart. Like, you would think with Crooked Star's Promise, he would have been a more important character, but he's really not. He's still kind of a background character. Um... And I think he's really interesting. He, I mean, he's kind of just your your typical good guy, but also kind of a rebel. Um, but yeah, he's he's really interesting, and I I feel like he could have gotten more attention in Crooked Star's Promise. But uh, for what we see of him, he's really cool, and he's always there, like for his children. And he's there for his clan, and he's a good deputy. Just all around good guy. Okay, this next one's easy peasy. Favorite pairing, Talltail and Jig. Um, it's one of the first pairings the Urns have written that I felt the two of them supported each other in the way a couple should. Uh, they, they just have fantastic chemistry together. And they're willing the what's really just uh, so heartbreaking about this is they're willing to make sure that the other one is happy, even if it means never seeing each other again. And if that ain't love, uh, I don't know what is like they're they're my OTP. <laughs> uh, best warriors pairing. Best written warriors pairing ever. Hands down. No questions asked. Least favorite pairing. Ooh, I mean, if we're, we're going canonical pairings, you know, not like crack ships or ships that were like one night stands or something like that. Um, Pairings that seem to be together just because are some of the worst for me. Like Firestar and Sandstorm and Brambleclaw and Squirrelflight. It's not that I hate these pairings. It's just like these two pairings should be happy with each other and should be more loving towards each other, but they're not for reasons. 
And these reasons make me mad. Like, why? Why does Firestar take Sandstorm so much for granted? She's so badass. And it just, like, sours the whole relationship for me. And then I hear in uh, the Bramble Star Super Edition that Bramble Star and Squirrel Flight kind of get back together because another cat leaves and so Bramble Star doesn't like oh it's just why <laughs> you guys have been through so much together you obviously care for each other but not really I guess like come on guys get 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 your shit together and just tell each other you love you love each other now and again okay it's like not that hard uh Favorite friendship. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. And I'm going to say uh, Jay Feather, Holly Leaf, and Lion Blaze. Um, I don't know if you count siblings as friends or like can be friends, but I'm going to. I really like these three's relationship with each other and like how their dynamic works with each other was the selling point for Power of Three for me. Uh, they made Power of Three good. Even when they didn't get along with each other and didn't see eye to eye, their their relationship with each other and how they worked off of each other was always fun to continue reading about. Favorite moment. I'm going to have to go with the beginning of the site where we have that whole first chapter from J. Kit's point of view and they go outside the nursery and then they get chased by the fox and J. Kit falls into the camp and has to get taken to see Leaf Pool to make sure he's okay. And then he has that declaration of, I hate being blind. Um, that was like a mind-blowing moment for me because I did not see it coming. Uh, it's one of those memories I'll always have of reading it and I'm being just like, what? And then I went back and I immediately reread that entire chapter again with that in mind. And like, I looked for cases where, you know, J. Kit would, would slip up or and say something like he saw this or something and it's not there. And it was like, that's that's clever writing, Hunters. Good job. Uh, and that just, like, hooked me on the power of three right away. Number 19, most tragic death. <sighs> There's a lot of them. Uh, Willow Breeze's death and Crooked Star's Promise. Oh, I shed some tears, guys. <laughs> that was... That was sad. And of course, some of the most tragic can always be when not necessarily even one of your like favorite characters has a fulfilling life and then they die. Like White Storm is sad, but you're like, you know what? Go out, he did, went out doing his thing. Same thing with like Cinderpelt. You know, she had a fulfilling life and a fulfilling death in Yellowfang. Sometimes some of the saddest can be ones like I just read Dawn of the Clans and there's the scene where Fluttering Bird dies. And yeah, we don't know anything about Fluttering, Fluttering Bird's character, but it's just like, it just sets the tone for that book and like how bad things are up in the mountains. Uh, and... You know, you, you hate to see young cats die. That's what makes Swift Paw's death so tragic. And, you know, what happened to Brightheart so tragic. Just sad cat deaths all around, <laughs> young and old. They all get me, and they're all terrible. <laughs> Quick mention here, though, from a boy, Stonefur. That was shocking, sad. And bitter as all hell because it's like Graystripe and Firestar are 
well, and Ravenpaw, we can't forget Ravenpaw helped out, were right there. And, you know, had they just been a little bit sooner, they could have potentially saved uh, Stonefur's life. But Stonefur went and sacrificed himself for Graystripe's kits. And, like, I, I think... I think that death is one of the most warrior's moments ever. <laughs> it's like you've got loyalty to your clan, honor. I mean, it's mm, it's it's the perfect death and it's so sad. <laughs> All right, before I turn into a rambling mess, last question. Favorite battle and or fight scene? I think the most iconic battle is definitely the one in Darkest Hour. Where, you know, at first you're tricked out because you think the battle's going to happen when Tiger Star and Scourge are there, and then it never happens, and you just, like, you have this anticipation building, like, f for, uh, what, a whole day, three days or whatever that Scourge gives them to get out of the forest, uh or be killed and there's just this anticipation of what are the clans going to do and you're like you're you know they're gonna fight for the forest and then it comes and the battle does not disappoint it's awesome and a lot of a lot of favorite cats die <laughs> and and the clans are forever more united because of it it's it's the best so Thank you, everyone, for listening to me ramble. I feel like at the end there, I got more and more rambly as I had to answer more questions, and I got started thinking about all the other books. <laughs> uh, but hopefully this makes at least a little sense. I am going to tag... Uh, my name is Water Dummy and Tosofsky. So... You two have fun with doing these 20 Warriors questions, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye bye